Yo, what is up my Nakama? So in this video, I'm going to be talking about how to stay motivated during your fitness journey. You gotta go ham every day. You gotta do a 225 bench press. You gotta do 100 pull-ups. You gotta get two scoops of protein, whey protein, every single day, twice a day. No, I'm just joking. That is exactly the opposite of what you wanna do to stay motivated during your fitness journey. So I feel that most people lose motivation during their fitness journey because they didn't hit a certain goal. For example, they wanted to lose 10 pounds in two weeks and they only lost three pounds. So because of this, they feel like a failure and you know they lose motivation because they didn't reach their exact goal. So the best piece of advice that I can give in order to maintain motivation during your fitness journey is to not set any concrete goals. And what I mean by this is setting goals in terms of an amount of weight you have to lose or a certain body fat percentage you have to be in a certain amount of time. The reason I say not to do this is because if you don't hit those goals, then you feel like you know your results aren't coming fast enough and you feel like you're not working hard enough and this leads to a loss of motivation during your fitness journey. So the best thing that I recommend to do is to treat fitness as a long-term commitment. You know, if you approach fitness as a lifestyle and it becomes a habit of yours, then it becomes something that you wanna do and you have fun doing rather than it feeling like something that you have to do. I think that when I first started calisthenics in my fitness journey, I had sort of the previous mentality where I had to lose this amount of weight or I wanted to gain this amount of muscle. And I think that was the wrong mentality to approach because, you know, six months to a year into my journey, I was feeling sort of demotivated because personally for me, I'm fairly tall and I was extremely large when I first started my calisthenics journey. And my progress was very slow especially compared to other people I was looking at on social media. Because of this, I started to lose motivation. I felt like I wasn't working hard enough. And at that point, I, I was asking myself, you know, why continue, you know, if I'm not seeing any progress? That's how you get into this trap of losing motivation. In most people's fitness journeys, the progress is actually very slow. And it requires a lot of consistency and a lot of dedication to actually see any results. That's why I don't recommend setting any sort of concrete goals. If you set those concrete goals and you don't reach them, um, then you'll lose motivation. Um, which is why you have to treat fitness as a long-term commitment. It has to be something that you know becomes a part of your lifestyle. You know, if you isolate 45 minutes to an hour every day and keep that consistency then of course you'll see results over a long period of time. Another crucial thing to keep in mind is to not compare yourself to others. You know, when you're scrolling through your Instagram page, you see all these fitness models and their chiseled physiques and their sort of unattainable body types. And I think when you compare yourself to these people, you lose motivation in yourself because you feel like it would be impossible to achieve a body like that. And I think that everyone's fitness journey is completely personalized. You know, everyone is completely different in their current abilities. Not everyone can run five miles right now. Not everyone can do a muscle up right now, which is why you need to do a lot of self-reflection before you start your fitness journey. You need to, you know, assess your current fitness levels and you need to think about why you want to start a fitness journey in the first place. And, you know, if you do this because you're comparing yourself to someone, um, then that's the wrong way to go about it. And really, you just need to compare yourself to yourself. You know, it's good to keep track of your own uh, records and your own body weight and measure your progress against yourself. You know, for example, yesterday I ran a mile in seven minutes, so today I'm gonna push myself to run a mile in six minutes and 50 seconds, for example. So the only person you should be comparing yourself and competing against is yourself if you, you know, are just going on a fitness journey on your own and you know, you're not competing at some Olympic level or something where you're competing against others, of course. I think the most important thing to take away from this video is to first not set any concrete goals for yourself. And just to rehash what I mean by this is that you want to approach fitness as a long-term commitment. You know, you want to set, it's okay to set long-term goals, you know, like I want to lose 20 pounds in this year or I just want to lower my body fat percentage in general. Those type of goals are okay, but you know, if you set really strict goals in a certain amount of time and you don't reach those goals, then as I mentioned before, that can be a huge demotivator. And the second thing is to avoid comparing yourself to others. You should really only be comparing yourself 
to yourself. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you take away some sort of fitness motivation from this. And as always, Data Bayo.